everybody, I'm New Age Designs, and today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide here in the world of Stormworks. Today we're going to be building a basic boat where I will talk you through all the steps as well as show you what to do to build your first boat. Before you can build your boat, first you need to come to the workbench. To access the workbench, you can press E or Q. First, we're going to be building the hull, and to do so, we're going to go up a few blocks. This is how high you want your hull to be. As, this, as I'm going to be building just a small speedboat, I'm only going to make it six blocks high. Next, we're going to drag out the block to about, for me, 25 blocks. If this is not long enough, we could always add on more. Next, we're going to go down to the, the bottom, bar up, select it, and drag out again. This is going to be then cut back by using the erase tool to make it into the hull shape that we need. To access the erase tool we can press X. Then we are going to delete parts by clicking on them to make the hull streamlined. This part of the hull is called the bow. The bow is the front and should be the most streamlined part of the hull. The, the stern or the back does not need to be a streamlined. Next we're going to be doing the stern. As by looking at this I can see it isn't long enough so I'm going to simply select my block here and drag it across another 10 blocks and then fill it in. I'm then going to reselect this delete tool by pressing X and delete some more. Remember that at the stern there will be some propellers so take that into account when you're designing it. Next, we're going to make this hull a bit more smooth. To do that, we can press tab to open up the inventory. Then we'll go up to the top and look for the one by one wedge. Double click it to select it and then go to the front and simply click and drag. Next, we're going to go back in and get to the one by two and repeat it again click and drag and then the same for the one by four but I'm not going to be dragging this time as I could have reached the bottom we're now going to be doing the same for the stern by selecting the one by two clicking the one by one and, and clicking and the one by two again and clicking make sure that you orientate your blocks the correct way Next we're going to make this hull a bit more 3D. Same again, we're going to be dragging out how far we want. But we want this to be happening on this side too. So I'm going to delete this and select the X plane from the symmetry widget up here. And then drag out again. About six blocks looks good. And then we're just going to make this flat again. Same as we've done. For the rest of the hull and same as last time we're just going to cut back if you make a mistake you can use the undo tool and the redo tool next we're going to get the pyramids pyramids are found just above the wedges for this we're going to select the one by one pyramid the two by two and the one by four to speed things along we're going to click and drag this block into our hot bar. We're going to do this for all three of them. I'm then going to close the inventory, select the first pyramid, and drag. Get the second one. But wait, this isn't correct. We need it to be the opposite. So we're going to go back into the inventory and grab the inverse pyramids and put them onto our hotbar. If you want to change the orientation of the hotbar, that's up to you. I'm going to get the one by two pyramids inverted and just simply drag and delete. Do the same by with the one by four. Now we've done that, our hull is looking a bit more 3D on the top anyway. We'll come back to the stern in a minute. 
Next, we're going to be smoothing out the rest of the hull so it isn't flat, really. So it gets more of that ship feel. To do this, we're just going to simply use the pyramids again to drag and place. Make sure that the hull is as smooth as you can possibly make it, as by doing so, it will make your ship look a whole lot better. As we can see here, this is going to be a bit of a problem to connect, so simply, we're just going to fix this by removing them and then adding on a simple block. We're then going to get my wedge again, which I put onto the hotbar, and my other wedge, drag down, and then get my 1x4 wedge, place that again. Now we're going to go in and get our wedges again, sorry, pyramids, and place them down. I'm quite happy with that. So, we're going to get the block again, and drag up. Then we're just going to go into the stern now. The stern doesn't need to be as streamlined, so we're simply just going to connect it out. If you want to select a block that has already been placed, press Ctrl and click on it. Now we're going to finish the side of the hull. We're just going to place the blocks back and then delete some to be made smooth. We're going to get our wedges then and continue them down. So that the end is a bit more curved. We're then going to go back into our inventory, or, as I, or if you've already got it in your hotbar, select the inverse pyramids. Whoops. And connect it like that. We're just going to finish this off for the rest of the hull. Stern. If you, as we can see here, we cannot connect this properly. There are no blocks, so we're simply just going to have to put up with a little bit of a flat surface there and connect it up. As it's at the back and the bottom of the ship, we don't really need to worry about that too much. Make sure that you go inside and remove this centre wall as best as you can and have a look for holes. If there are any holes in your hull, the game will not see it as sealed and therefore will not see it as a floating object. If it's sealed, we can click spawn up here and test it out for the first time. As we can see now, it's looking a little bit wide for its length and the front is very low down. For the fact that it's the bow is low down, that's okay as we will be adding engines but because of how thick it is, I think I'm going to extend it back a bit. So we're going to press R on it to bring it back to the workbench, and then select the selection grid tool. Press Ctrl and click, select the resize mode, and then just select the entire stern. We're then going to click move slash cut, and move it back a few blocks, and then simply fill it in. Oops, wonder what's happened there. Undo, and fill it in. These now are different objects, so to fix that, we go up to Merge, click on the green, and then on the red to merge them together. As we can see now, when we highlight one half, they don't change their colour. We're then just going to finish the side of the hull, and then that's us. If you want to change anything on the hull, now is probably the best time. Now we are going to be going on to the engine. We are going to go in and select the engine from about halfway down in the inventory. For this boat I am going to be using the medium engine, or as it used to be called, the aircraft engine. We are going to place it near the back and place it down. We are then going to go in the inventory and get some pipes. First we're going to pipe in the air. Air needs connection, a connection to the top. 
as it can as it will cut out the engine if any water gets to it. So simply we're going to select the T piece and place it down. Then the pipe straight pipes. Place them down. An angled pipe. Place it down. Select the straight again. Go up, remove the block directly above the pipe, and then scroll down to near the bottom. Here we're going to select the fluid port and place it down. This now means that air can get in and out. Please note that if, if the pipes have to go up or down more than eight blocks before they get to their inlet or outlet, make sure you have a pump. Next we're going to be doing coolant. Coolant can be simply put into a radiator or two if you want. So we're going to be using the heat sink from beside the inlet port and then place them down so that these wee holes are at the top. We're going to be placing down two for this bolt. Now we're going to go back into pipes and we're going to disable the X plane. By doing so we can then connect this half to the engine and then this half to each other. And it also helps to, before you place down, make sure that when you hover over the inlet or outlet on the engine it says coolant. Next we're going to be going on to exhaust. To do this we're going to re-enable the X plane and we're just simply going to pipe the exhaust out. Hmm. Out and back. We're just going to pipe this out just behind our air intake as it will look quite nice to have all of the exhaust and air intakes at the same point. There. Some engines only have one exhaust outlet but some have two. I would advise that you have at least one outlet for every exhaust part on the engine. Finally, for the needs of the engine, we have fuel. Fuel is found near the bottom of the inventory in the fluid category in one of these fuel tanks. We're going to select the large one, look for the out that black outlet, place it on its side so that the outlet is facing the engine, flip it so the outlet is at the top and place it down. We're next going to go into the select tool, select the fuel tank and make sure it's set to diesel. Then we're going to get our pipes again and simply pipe the fuel to the engine. There. That's everything done for the engine's needs. Now all we need is the propellers. Propellers are found near the middle of the inventory right here. For this one, we're just going to be using some small connectors. Propellers, sorry. We're just going to simply place them down and go on the inside to see for some holes. The game does see this as a hole as water can get in and out some of those small cracks. We're going to select a normal block and just seal it up. As we can see here, this is where the power from our engine should go. Power is transported also through pipes. So we're just going to connect these all together using the T piece. And then into the clutch. As we can see here, we can't actually place a block down because of the engine. So we're simply going to take a block away place that down, 
take away the T place, place that down there, that down there, and just move these forward one. Make sure that they're all placed down correctly. We'll then bring this back, get our straight pipe, up, across, get our T pipe, and then both together. Then we'll get the clutch from near the top, place that down, and that's it connected to the engine. If it isn't running fast enough, you could always use a gearbox. But at this moment in time, I don't think we'll be putting one in. But we will be putting one in later in this tutorial. Next, we need somewhere to control this boat from. Simply, I'm just going to get a helm. You could also use driver's seats. And place it down in the top. Later, I'll make this look nice during the paint stage. Now we've finished that stage, we're going to be going on to the logic stage. Simply click up on the logic tab, select data, and now we can work this out. So, when we press number one, we want it to start the engine. So we're going to connect hotkey one to the engine. Then we're going to click the select tool, select the helm, select hotkey one, make it a push, and, cl and call it starter. Then we're going to go logic again and we're going to get throttle. Throttle I'm going to make W and S. I'm going to go and select it again, W S. I'm going to make this sticky and call it throttle. Then we're going to need some way to steer the boat. To do this I'm going to place down two rudders. Rudders are found near the helm here. Make sure when you're placing these you disable any axes and you'll look at the arrows on the bottom. Minus arrow represented by the blue negative symbol should be going to the left so we'll place it down. Then we'll go into logic and connect these to W, nope, sorry, E and D. We'll also connect up and down to the clutch. We're going to go into these, call A and D steering. And we're going to call up and down clutch. Now, before we do anything else, we've got one more thing we need to connect, which is electricity. We'll go down to the electricity tab, select the medium battery, and place down two. Now we need to re-enable the X axis, so we'll delete that battery, place it down, place down another one, and then select the electricity tab. Then we'll select one of these and then connect it to every single node. Now what we're going to do is go into the spawn, spawn in your vehicle and we'll go test it. If you can't get on, try going under the water then up or just selecting your seat. So we'll turn up the throttle, press number one to start it, press up to enable the clutch, and then we'll test the steering. This, uh, this is looking quite good. Now I want to be able to add in a reverse. To do that, we need to add in a gearbox, so we'll take it back to the workbench zone, press F to leave the seat, and press R to bring it back to the workbench. To add a reverse, we need a gearbox. 
So to add a gearbox, we're going to need to move the engine back one. We can simply do that by just using the selection grid. Whoops. Reset the grid. Select here. And then just select the entire engine. Once you've done that, click the move tool and move it back one. Merge them together and then just fix any holes that you've made. Now we're going to connect all of these pipes back together. Once you're sure you've, got, you've done that, just have a little quick look at up the top for any holes that you've made. And then we're going to be adding in the gearbox. So a gearbox is the same length as a clutch, but one block higher. So we're just going to remove here, select a gearbox, and place it down. When it comes to reverse, the arrows do not matter but I'll be doing another tutorial on how to set up your engine soon. We're going to be piping the power back into our propellers by using the T-piece, which will then go into our gearbox. We'll then connect up the electricity and connect up a hotkey. We'll put this on number two. Then we'll rename our hotkey to reverse. And then go into the select tool and select our gearboxes. We will make ratio two one to negative one on both of these. We'll then save our vehicle as simple boat. And then spawn it in. We'll then go into, add into it, turn up the throttle. Press number one to start it, put up the clutch, enter a third person, and just see if it reacts. Have a little shot at turning. As we can see, this is a little bit sharp for turning any faster and it could tip over, so we'll be putting a clamp on that. We're going to slow down the clutch. And then we're going to press number two to engage reverse. We will then press up on the clutch again. Oh, the engine's died, so we'll just start it again. And we're going backwards now. We'll then go back forwards, start the engine again, and turn. We'll bring it back to the rear, the workbench, and go in. So as we could see, the boat was turning a bit vigorously when it was at full turn, which was meaning it was rolling. So to do, fix that, we're going to add in some weights at the bottom. We're simply just going to drag across and then just make it a bit more smooth. There are some other ways to do this, such as active stabilization systems. But I'll be showing that off in another video. This is the most simple way to do it though. We're also going to be adding a clamp onto the, the rudders. This is found in the logic area. Here we're going to place it down, click the select tool and we're going to clamp it between for the minimum value minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. We'll then just put these into the rudders and then connect the input 
to A and D. Save this. Spawn it in. And then test it out again. Turn up the throttle. Press number one. Turn up the clutch. And we'll see how it reacts. And we're going to turn. Sorry, I let go of the clutch there. <laughs> That's looking much better as not as many propellers come out of the water. We'll bring this back into the workbench. Kill the engine. And then take it back. Now this, the next step is the paint step. For this, I'm also going to be decorating the boat as well. I'm going to cut, cut here and then come back once I've finished painting. So for this I've just added on a bit front to raise it up a bit and put a small room just in front of the helm. I've moved the helm over to the side a little and I've moved the exhaust and air intakes and outtakes up and to the side. Inside the little room we have a small bed, a little table and a hob. I've also slightly changed throttles as I've now made the clutch sticky so that then you can go for a little sleep whilst your boat's driving. I've also added on some lights so for colour wise I have used simply this beige colour on the interior I've used a grey colour on the top half of the boat a blue stripe and I've used some dark blue on the underside. I would love to find out how your guys boats turned out and if you've enjoyed today's video please consider giving it a like and if you've truly loved it don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys later.